Hey, Steve Minotti here. Before we get to our junkyard crawl video for today, just a heads up, on October 1st, if you're in the Durant, Oklahoma area, I'll be there live at Spanky Acider's inaugural Freedom Choctaw Collector Car Auction at the Choctaw Casino and Resort Event Center, again, in Durant, Oklahoma, where a whole bunch of cool collector cars are gonna get sold, many of them at no reserve, and I'll be on the stage live doing commentary. One of the best cars and most special cars in that event is gonna be the actual 58 Chevrolet Impala, fully restored, that was once owned by Peggy Sue Geron. Yes, that Peggy Sue, the star of several Buddy Hall songs. Pretty, pretty, pretty Peggy Sue. That was her 58 Impala. That car is going to get sold at no reserve again on October 1st at the inaugural Freedom Choctaw Collector Car Auction in Durant, Oklahoma, October 1st. Be there if you want to take a shot at that car and just check out a great auction. Okay, let's get right into the junkyard crawl here at Berniston Auto Wrecking. Hey, Stevie Nani here doing the junkyard crawl at Berniston Auto Wrecking. Ever hear the story about the Ford pickup truck with two front axles? Well, that's kind of what you get when you're talking about the Ford twin I-beam front suspension, which arrived in 1965. Now, this one here is a 1966 F100 short bed step side, or at least this is the remains of one. But here's the thing, from 1961 through 1980, the VIN doesn't tell you what year the truck is, but luckily, Ford pickup trucks did have annual styling upgrades. And for 1966 and 66 only, these horizontal slits right here and this sort of peaked nose was how Ford styled the grills. So we can clearly identify this as a 1966. Although with that said, 1960, there was actually a year code in the VIN, but again, from 61 through 80, you can't tell. The only way to really know again is through body styling or the serial number stack up. That'll tell you for sure, but you need a service manual to do that. Now, the thing about twin I-beam front suspension is that it utilized for the first time ever on a Ford pickup truck, coil springs. Let's take a peek right here. Now you can see again, that's the coil spring. Now in 1964, this would have had conventional leaf springs and a beam axle up front. But again, for 65 onward on two wheel drive Ford pickups, the twin I-beam arrangement replaced leaf springs. Now here is the rear, the lower control arm, if you will, the anchor right there, and that swings up and down. Now there's actually a two piece front axle on this, which brings us back to the, the myth of the Ford pickup truck with two front axles. And here is a look at how that was arranged. We can see right here, this is the twin I-beam. Now here's that lower control arm we just saw, but the axles are actually pivoted. They're about, they go about 80% of the way across the truck. And here's one for the driver's side, there's the passenger side. And this is the Ford twin I-beam, but notice they're not pivoted in the middle. If they were, then each one of these half axles would have huge camber shifts. Instead, the axle half on this side is anchored over there way over, like on the other side of the frame rail. So there's not that much camber drop on these things, but there is camber drop, I have to say. But speaking of that two, that two piece axle, here's some Ford advertising. It says here, Ford fever is busting out all over. Everybody's in a dither about the two front axles in a new Ford pickup. They swoon when they see those tough I-beam axles, those Ford steel radius rods. They pine for those long life coil springs. Take your ride yourself and see how comfortable a tough truck can be, but be careful. Once you get the fever, you'll never be satisfied with any other pickup. You've got to keep in mind that Ford fever, well, in 1968, there was Dodge fever, which I wonder if they fought about that in court. I kind of doubt it. But with that said, the two piece front axle was very real. Now here's the thing. It was actually 30 pounds lighter than the beam and leafs that were replaced. And uh, it was also known as something called the Halton Burger configuration. That means that there's no idler arm on these. The steering box actually feeds, here's the box right here, a manual steering box. The arm feeds all the way across to the passenger side and picks up the driver's side right here. There's no parallelogram as you might find like on a Chevy pickup truck with coil springs up front. So again, the Halton Burger configuration here was lighter, had fewer links, fewer moving parts, was cheaper to make. And again, was the way to accommodate the two drop axles, the swing axles, if you will, on the Ford uh, twin I-beam front suspension. Now this one here is a New England native. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second, but we can see here the tin that's been pop riveted in place. In fact, aluminum sheeting to restore some degree of quasi integrity to this thing. But, uh, you know, rust, rust is the, uh, the enemy in the junkyard. Let's go to the trim tag on the door to learn more about how this truck was originally configured. Now it does have the 11 inch drums. Disc brakes would become available in 1968 on Ford pickup trucks up front, but this is the drum. They're, they're fine, they're big brakes, 11 inches by two. But here we have the trim tag right here. 
Now, first and foremost, we go to the VIN to see which engine we were born with. Originally, there's a B. That means this one had the 300-inch 6, which was rated at 150 horsepower. The irony is there was a 240 cubic inch 6, which was also rated 150 horsepower net. So the 300 and the 240 both rated 150. But in advertising, Ford called the 300 170 horsepower. But I think for tax purposes, that's what we have going on here. Now, here's transmission. That's a light-duty three-speed manual on the column shifter. We'll see that in a second. V8 one, that's the uh, standard cab, or N81, excuse me. And of course the axle, the 08 tells us it has a 350 to one open differential. And about that rust, 11 is the Boston sales code, the DSO. So this thing was a New England truck from day one. But getting back to that light duty three speed manual, we'll notice on this one here, there's no hole in the floor. This would have been a column shifted light duty three speed. The heavy duty three speed would have come up through the floor, would have been a top loader type uh, with the shifter going into the top. But again, rubber floor mats on this very austere uh, F100. Here again are the edges of the old factory rubber floor mats. You can see it right here, the rubber floor mats hiding all that rust underneath. And uh, kind of nice originality on this. Now this was a step side truck. And we can see here the remnants of the steps. They're long gone. Too bad for that, but this would have had a short wheelbase and the nine inch rear axle would have been right here. And something we also see are the remains of the original strip plates or the wear plates inside of what used to be a wooden bed. Yes, there was an optional wooden bed and here are remains of it. And uh, again, steel bed or wood, both possible. Speaking of steel, here's an add-on step rear bumper. This is not something that Ford would have sold you. This would have been a dealer item right here or a, an individual purchase. And we can see the mounts on this are kind of handmade and flame cut and stuff. So that's not a factory piece, but again, a, a classic add-on to a Ford pickup truck. Uh, the nine inch rear axle, unfortunately, is gone. Again, it only had a 350 to one gear, but it's not a bad ratio. But again, it would have been an open gear. So one tire, one tire would have spun on this thing here. But again, 300 cubic inches, three on the tree. Um, Twin I-beam suspension, final year for this starting cycle here, which went, I think, what, 1957 uh, through, or 58, 58 through 1966. So here it is right here. 67, a whole different truck arrived for Ford, but it continued the twin I-beam dynasty. And in fact, twin I-beam became four-wheel drive capable. They call it the twin traction front axle. You'll see those in the late 1970s. But again, this is the end and the beginning for Ford right here. Now, the funny thing is, when Ford introduced the twin I-beam front suspension in 1965, you'd think the price must have gone up, right? Well, the price on a 1965 Stepside F100 was about 1966 bucks, which was $2 more than the 1964 beam axle, same truck. So they didn't charge more. And again, the twin I-beam suspension actually shaved 30 pounds off the production weight of the truck. So it was a step in the right direction. And of course, handling was a little better, but again, downside on them is with a heavy load, the front tires did tend to camber up and down and do weird things. And again, the twin I-beam front suspension was strictly two-wheel drive stuff, not on four-wheelers, till you get into the late 1970s when the twin traction would join the twin I-beam front suspension. So that's the story of this 19. 1966 Ford F100 step side, uh, the bones thereof here at Bernston Auto Wrecking. Uh, we'll be back with more tomorrow. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mac YouTube channel. I'm bleeding for you.